In this episode I'm proving the cliché that sailing is fixing things in exotic locations and also sharing more details about my new design fitting and how I rebuilt the autopilot setup, hoping to get rid of the ongoing problem with critical pin breaking at the quadrant, as we even experienced during our Pacific crossing. After having cleared in to French Polynesia in Iwaua, we spent a few days resting at the beach and only enjoying the beauty surrounding us here at the much smaller neighbor island. Just look at this beach and the sound. And it's not only above the surface, it's spectacular sceneries and beauty out here. Even below the surface, it's a surprise or two just waiting to be admired as I found out while diving on our anchor. The seafloor here is a bit hard and also lots of rocks and even coral heads, so it's a bit tricky to get a good hold right away. And only 15 meters down, under B3, the big manta race was distracting me and delaying or resetting of the anchor. As much as we really wanted to spend more time just chilling at this gorgeous beach, the old cliché could not be more accurate. Sailing is fixing things in exotic locations, and now I don't have time to play around here no matter how much I wanted to. I have some serious projects on my hands. Ever since I bought B3, her autopilot, and not to forget the pin that sits on the quadrant has been an ongoing challenge. I have experimented a lot to improve this with different setup and different hydraulic systems and computers. Autopilot version 2.0, as I like to call it, is from Lecomble and Schmidt and have worked flawless in combination with the Raymarine Evolution computer. The pin I just mentioned that sits on one of the quadrants has been an ongoing challenge and even failed at the end of our Pacific crossing. This is something I was afraid of was going to happen, and also the reason why I designed a new fitting but unfortunately did not have time to install before the crossing. Further out here you will probably understand why and the amount of work this would be as a last minute project. Nevertheless, it did of course almost as expected create a problem, forcing us to hand steer the last 100 miles. One of the things I have loved the most owning a Bavaria is the average pretty good quality, but also the fact they normally use out of the shelf products on most things. Like anything from doorknobs to rigging components, meaning spare parts, also is out of the shelf almost everywhere. Almost as easy as bread and butter. When it comes to steering system and the helm station, this is not exactly out of the shelf, even though it's based on the Cobra solution from Lemar that sits as standard on lots of even much more expensive yachts. Bavaria, however, was not happy with this and demanded a beefed up version and this is in fact good advertisement for Bavaria in itself and says a lot about their good engineering. Please don't take me wrong here, I'm not pretending to be smarter than Bavaria as they have the best engineers in the mass production world, with a building quality far better than most production yachts. Still, my experience is the pin is too thin for the number of layers with all the moving parts, and the main reason why I wanted to change and modify this in a long time. Designing a fitting to sit on the shaft instead giving only one layer of moving parts, and spreading the load equally to all the quadrants. So I finally succeeded with uh, making a new place for the hydraulic arm uh, for the autopilot, and also a new platform for the compressor and everything uh, looks pretty nice. I also fitted the new coupling on the shaft. I had to make a hole <laughs> in the wall here. I'm gonna make a, a beautiful door uh, outside it. In this way it's easier to access and I can inspect it and also for the um, uh, compressor it's easier to uh, look at the reservoir and make sure it has enough liquid. 
It's not so many options to find a good place where I could build a strong platform for the hydraulic. So this was a serious challenge. I first made a fiberglass platform that fits perfect and pre-drilled the holes for the screws. Using light from underneath to see where to remake the holes after it's fiberglassed and reinforced. The last millimeters of drilling has to be done manually from here. At least with the limits I have in tools and space. With a metal bracket under and precise and tight, this will give no room for wiggling. Guess you can imagine how compact and challenging this is, and the need of doing things in the right order. I managed to get the hydraulic arm in place and also managed to find a place for the pump, uh, the compressor. So what's left now is to bleed the hydraulic system. And to bleed the hydraulic system, it's not that difficult, uh, but it's a little bit challenged because it's so compact spacer. So I found some uh, tubes for uh, propane. So I'm gonna use them to avoid to have all the mess inside here. So I basically put some hose clamps on and inside here I'm gonna put the tubes on the nipples that's back here. So sorry, not so much light, it's <laughs> not so easy to film and work and have lights at the same time. I only have two sets of arms so but um, yeah I'm gonna try to bleed and see if I can get this autopilot system up working again. Now on a shelf here so I have to take the pump down and fill it up with uh, hydraulic liquid and then uh, start moving the piston on the hydraulic arm for the uh, shaft that goes between the two quadrants and then when it's bleeded and I get uh, liquid coming out of both of the tubes and hopefully get rid of the air bubbles, it should be uh, good to go. Unfortunately, a uh, major setback and uh, <laughs> everything went so smooth, the engineering here I'm a bit proud of, it's, uh, it's really compact space and it was uh, hard work. While bleeding I suspected leaks already, but was not sure as it could also be from the bleeding. The duct tape is only labels with numbers I made to make sure they were placed back in correct order. So I cannot build up uh, pressure, so they did not, um, or maybe I uh, destroyed it, I don't know. Uh, but unfortunately the fittings uh, had some cracks. It could be that it's some old cracks I have not seen, uh, or I provocated it when I tried to fit it. Uh, anyway. On the good side, uh, we are not more than 900,000 nautical miles away from Tahiti. And in Tahiti alone, there is eight different companies that works with hydraulics. So um, it's at least possible to get uh, what I need there. Also, I have an uh, old uh, hydraulic uh, pump, an uh, old um, uh, auto autopilot setup. And I'm gonna dust uh, the dust off that and see if I can fix it and see if we can use that as a temporary uh, autopilot solution. I used to have a redundancy and backup, but uh, the other one is uh, <laughs> destroyed also. And the computer was destroyed by the lightning strikes. I only have the one computer left for the autopilot and that one still works. So the only thing I need is to get uh, some new uh, custom made um, tubes with uh, fittings for this hydraulic. As you can see, it's not much space here. And, uh, the arm goes through and I put some here, some um, hose clamps and tape to not have it leaking while we are sailing. So the around here I'm gonna make a, a, a nice uh, frame and a door over here. So this is in the aft cabin. It's not like I made a hole through the garage, it's only through the inner liner accessing the compartment that sits on top of the tender garage and not compromising any structural or critical parts of B3. 
I found this to be the best place to fix the hydraulic drive, as it can be aligned with a metal beam that connects the two quadrants, that's then connected with the other quadrants, that's again are fitted on the rudder shafts. Under the cockpit floor there is a hatch I can access from inside the tender garage. Here is the shaft that uh, connects the two quadrants uh, together from starboard and port side. And this is the part I had uh, made in Panama. And as you can see here sits the coupling now for the hydraulic arm. And uh, that's aligned uh, with this. And uh, it's of course tested so it works perfectly. This piece now sits here and the load is spread out on this uh, shaft equally to both quadrants and the pin is of course much much shorter. The old solution was basically not strong enough. Now I have thicker pins and one third of the length. According to physics force times arm this improvement should be a winner. So I've been working on the old autopilot and uh, that one sits on the port side and uh, basically uh, old hydraulic system and the problem with the old one was that it was a little bit uh, too weak that's why I retired it. Here sits the compressor from uh, the old uh, hydraulic, actually the first hydraulic I bought in uh, St. Lucia some years ago. And behind there is the fitting for the electric drive that was originally installed. And as I learned the hard way in 2018, having electric direct drive with metal gears in the gearbox is not only unnecessary complicated, it's also a pretty dangerous solution. When this gearbox failed, my steering was jammed in high seas. Imagine if this happened in a docking situation. Also getting spares to this was a project I gave up after trying for 6 months through the Mars dealer network. And this was even an out of the shelf product and not custom or beefed up. So but here is the old pump and it goes here to this quadrant on this side. So it's basically the same um, problem as uh, the other one. So this one I got uh, welded uh, in uh, St. Lucia when I started on this first project. So yeah and I have uh, wired up the cables to the old computer and now it's time to see if it works. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> Look at that. Based on the sound it still needs more hydraulic oil and to be bleeded a bit more. I still have my test battery in the cabin with the cables ready. And just connect it straight on to the hydraulic because then it's uh, faster. Uh, much faster way to uh, bleed and to uh, run the hydraulic arm in and out and um, yeah see if it leaks and how it works so i managed to build up pressure on it and it looks pretty good i know back in the days uh, the problem the challenge with that hydraulic system was it was too weak uh, but it's not strong winds here it's mostly downwind sailing so i think we will manage so it's the rudder indicator works and as you can see the um, rudder also moves and that's because we are at anchor and are moving a little bit. Of course uh, this is not a sea trial uh, with sailing so we still don't know if it works as uh, we hope but uh, this looks really promising. So we have a Norwegian boat there. And we have a Norwegian boat there, and we have a Norwegian boat there. So, in this little tiny anchorage, there are actually four Norwegian boats. <laughs> How epic is that?
This afternoon, however, we are already invited over to our friends Kara and Karl. And after so much hard work, it's nice to be a bit social and at least enjoy the sunset. And here is Karl and Karen. Hello! No, we don't have we don't have to go to all of them. Alright, well I feel honored that you've joined us. It just feels like Scandinavia sometimes. Yeah, it's like a Scandi hooligan bay now. It's like uh, yeah, there's four Scandi hooligans and one Danish, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> you give us the painting there. Yeah. I just learned that you do the painting. Yeah, oh, very good. I but I'm dying to hear about that trip. And <laughs> they don't want to talk about it. If you, do, if you don't want to talk about it, that's okay too. So what he's bubbling about is still want to hear about our Pacific crossing. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. 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 Stick it on YouTube. <laughs> okay. I'll watch it and I'll post some questions. No, we, we oh, nice. Cheers. 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 Cheers, guys. Ching, ching, ching. So. Thank you so much for watching. I <laughs> really hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, until next time, cheers! <laughs>